Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Sunday the 26th of June 2022. Now, I film these videos quite late and that's sometimes that's an advantage and that's, that's especially today because it came out late tonight about half 11. This was published by um, LondonNewsOnline.co.uk Mill poised to sign whole city midfielder George Honeyman. So it looks like we will have, be having our second signing of the summer tomorrow, hopefully. So let's have a little read of this. Mill was set to make George Honeyman their second signing of the summer transfer window. The 27 year old all action midfielder is set to undergo a medical tomorrow morning and will, barring any complications, fly out to join the Lions. On a training camp in Ireland later on Monday. We all signed the former Sunderland player on a permanent deal. The Lions made their first breakthrough of the summer with a club record 1.7 million transfer of Zion Fleming on Friday evening with the Dutchman's deal confirmed on Saturday morning. Honeyman had a double win in the 2020-21 Player of the Year awards as he took the accolade both from the supporters and also their players in the campaign they won the League One title. He signed for the Tigers in August 2019 for an undisclosed fee from the Black Cats. He captained Sunderland at the age of 23 and was the first academy produced player to skip it aside since Michael Gray. So we are set to sign George Honeyman. Just need a medical on Monday morning. And once that's done and dusted, he'll be flying off to Ireland with the rest of the team so fantastic stuff there fantastic stuff second signing of the summer seems to be a pretty decent player um not standout star material but still good nonetheless i imagine there is a specific role that gary rowett wants him for Otherwise, it's a bit of a. Um, there's no previous link with him. I don't think he's in, he's worked with him before. So there must be something about the way he plays that they want him to come in and um, play for Millwall. So let's have a look and see. And this is some of the stats. Um, this is from whoscored.com. And this is the last season. Uh, in the championship for Hull City, 34 appearances, 2,999 minutes, 5 goals, 4 assists, 9 yellow cards, um, 3 man of the matches, a rating of 6.77. So, pretty, pretty decent, but not the best. Um, he mainly plays as an attacking centre midfielder. So, Well, is that where they're going to play him? I don't know. Then where does Zion play? Does Zion play on the right? Um, how are we how are we lining up next season? Um, so you can see when he plays AMC, he gets a rating of six point eight two. Playing on on the outside right, he's got six point eight one. Playing a uh, more deeper middle role, he gets a six point zero four. So better going forward. Uh, these are his strengths. His key pass is very strong. Taking set piece is very strong. Maybe he's the one who's going to be delivering the balls into Zion Williams. Or Zion Fleming. Uh, tackling is very strong. Which is weird because he's an AMC. But he's very good at tackling. Is this the high up, high up the pitch pressing game? If he's very good at tackling. If he, we press high. He can tackle the ball. We can do a quick short counter attack, bing bang bong, score some goals. Uh, through balls, strong. Defensive contribution, strong. Not bad for an AMC. Weaknesses, aerial duels. Uh, he likes to do layoffs, gets fouled often, likes to play short passes, likes to tackle. Don't we all? So there you have it. Um, let's just have a little click, uh, quick click through this so he averages 2.3 tackles per game which like i said for an amc that's kind of uh interesting 
So maybe that is what he's there for. To press high up the pitch and get the ball back. Pretty quickly. Um, average passes per game. Uh, 33.5. Okay. So let's just have a quick look at his games last season. Uh, he's had a whole season of whole season. He started off not too good, not too good. Um, some very, quite low ratings. Um, I don't know if he's played at this level before, but um, so it's obviously took him a while to get going at a championship level. Uh, he didn't play full 90 minutes until the West Brom game. Um, but then something clicked in November. Uh, he scored, got an assist, got man of the match, got 8.66 rating. Um, and then the game after, 8.58, uh, scored um, in a 2 0 win over Birmingham. And then he started playing 90 minutes quite regularly. And he's uh, ups and downs in terms of the rating, but scored a couple of goals. Um, let's have a look. So. Nearly all of his goals were scored at home. He scored away at Barnsley, which isn't that far from uh, Hull, still in the Yorkshire area. But the other goals were at home. He scored against us. Uh, Hull 2, Mill 1, he scored and got man of the match. So maybe that's what, what caught the eye for uh, Gary Rowan there. Um, he hasn't scored since January, though. He has had three assists. Um, but you can see his rating does vary a bit. It's 5.97 against Derby. Um, it's interestingly, he's... Okay, yeah. So he's, his ratings do vary quite strangely. So you can see here, you've got 8.3. If you look at the bomb, uh, 8.3. Um, in a 3 0 win at home to Reading, and then the next game after the week after 6.04 as he got beat 5 0 by Bristol City. So, no, not really consistent, but um, we will we'll see, uh, we'll see that tomorrow. So, as the, as the um players head out to Ireland for training in Cork. Photo Ireland. Uh, obviously, no games out there. That that's what they tell us. But I think there is another club out there at the same time as them, so they probably could get a, a game in if they wanted to. But so uh, the Lions head to the Emerald Isle. Mill squad will begin their annual preseason training camp on Monday morning. So did they travel there on Sunday? Did they? Um, this time, Gary and his staff will take the players to the Republic of Ireland putting them through their paces of a variety of double sessions until Saturday when they make their return. Um, the Lions' first summer signing is Iron Fleming will travel to the camp with new teammates. Joining the squad and management in the Emerald Isle will be millfc.co.uk bringing you all the interviews, photos and more as the fitness levels rise. Stay tuned indeed. And um, when, they, when they put it up, Obviously, it's going to be on this channel because that's um, that's the Millwall news that we're going to get. Um, so yeah, something else that come out today: another deal involving former Millwall player of last season has fallen through. Now we got news the other day that Ben Kofobi's move to Club Brugge had fallen through, and some people were joking online, well, because he heard a design on Fleming. Um, Signing for Millwall, he's he wants to come and play for Millwall now. Um, but we have this one now. Um, Burnley have withdrawn from trying to sign Danny Ballard, which is weird because he was set to go up there for a medical. It was that far along, but apparently, and they pulled out. So this is from Football League World K. Blackpool, Millwall and Sunderland end the transfer race for 10 cap international. So, championship rivals Blackpool, Millwall and Sunderland have all entered the race to recruit Arsenal centre-back Daniel Ballard, according to a Patreon report by Alan Nixon. 
the Northern Irishman previously looked set to head to second tier outfit Burnley with a two million deal reported to have been agreed. But since then, the Clarets have pulled out of the race with other irons in the fire. Uh, and then they talk about who those are, but I don't really care. Um, yeah, so they spin it out, but there's not really much new there. Um, Ballard may be allowed to exit the Emirates Stadium on a permanent basis with Miko Arteta, unlikely to use him regularly next season, though it's full. Alex Neal's side would prefer a loan move for the 22-year-old at this stage, so Blackpool would want a loan um, signing. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's another weird one. Like, What's happened there? There are some rumours going around. One is that the knee injury that he has is a bit... It's one of those ongoing things. It's quite serious and... Uh, he needs to be nursed through it it's not it's something that he has to live with for the rest of his f football career um apparently i don't know although we did get that um marston were very concerned about the number of games that he was playing because of his knee injury um that's why we had to give him a little rest because he went away with northern ireland and played for them when he come back they said uh can you just rest him for a bit? So we did. Um, so it might be that. The other thing is the clauses that Arsenal are putting in. They're just like, are you selling him or what? Because if you sell him, then why? You, what? How can you keep putting all these clauses in? It's like if you if you sell your house to someone, but then you put in it. Oh, you can't dec You can't redecorate. You can't change any 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 of the. You can't do any building work. No, you have to keep it exactly the same. Well, hang on, you've sold the house. You don't fucking live here anymore. You can't dictate what I do with the house when I bought it, kind of thing. But they are. They are like putting all these clauses in, saying they get first refusal. Um, they can match the bids if anyone else bids. Um, there's a sell on clause if if they don't re-sign him apparently I don't know but they're putting all, all kinds of uh, junk onto the transfer so maybe that's what made them walk away I don't know but we'll see um, now they're putting our names in it just because I think then Danny Ballard was on loan with us last season with 2 million I, you we basically you spent that for Zion Fleming um, should we be spending that for Danny Ballard? I don't know. Uh, can we? Have we got that guy for money? Don't know. Um, it's not our, It's not my money. It's John Berylson's money. Um, is he? Is he willing to go for it? I mean, we finished ninth. We were seventh. Um, going into the last day of the season, we're there or thereabouts. I mean, maybe he believes what Garrett's been doing. Um, and he's he's willing to back him with the, with the funds available for the right players. Is Danny Ballard one of the right players? Do we really need to spend two million on the centre back when we have um, Hutchison, Cooper, Wallace? Um, we've got others. We've got Alex Mitchell on the bench. Um, there are pretty decent uh, centre backs still available for free. Uh, you don't really need to be signing too many, and I mean Johan Barbet and QPR are still available, and I'm sure there's others as well that you can sign um, for less than two million. So I don't know. I don't know. We don't know what is happening. It's quite weird that um, Benikafobi's deal fell fell through, and Danny Ballard's deal deal fell through. Very interesting. So, um, moving on now to this. Uh, Wayne Rooney has left Derby County. Why am I telling you about that? Well, um, obviously Gary Rout is from Derby County. He was their manager before. He bailed out because he didn't like all the uh, financial stuff going on in the background. Uh, I don't think he, he could see it was about to implode. Um, 
they've just appointed Lee, Liam Rossinia as the new interim manager just two days after head coach Wayne Rooney has left the club and this is uh, I don't know what this is from uh, this is from the Telegraph uh, I think it's from the, I'm not sure to be honest yeah um, so Rosinia has been at Pride Park since 2019 he's working with Philip Koku and then Wayne Rooney um, so this is like a temporary job but why am I bringing this up well could Gary Rowett go back there I'm sure he, he, he might be interested now that they're kind of clean they obviously don't have much money um, there's a local businessman David Close he's had his bid to buy a derby accepted uh, he's a lifelong supporter of the club hopes to complete the purchase on Wednesday um, does he is does he have any money to pump into it probably not is he just doing it to save the club and then he's going to try and find because um, there was a, a very real chance that they could uh, go out of business if they couldn't prove that they had the funds to last for the whole season so maybe he's just trying to save the club and stop them going extinct to like Barry and Macclesfield um, and Accrington Stanley who are they exactly um, but I don't know if Gary Rout knows who this guy is or maybe maybe Gary Rout won't jump straight away maybe he'll wait for this guy to see what's happening what's going on for him to stabilize the club and then maybe once they do get a new owner with a bit more money, Gary might be tempted to go back there. But you never know. Weirder things have happened. Um, but it would be quite... Um, we've just had many, many staff at the club leave. Harvey Bustle's gone. He went in January. We've had um, Joe Carnell leave. Uh, Bloom. He's left. They're still looking for uh, numerous jobs in the staffing uh, situation at Millwall. So it wouldn't be the weirdest thing if Garrett did decide to leave. But it it would be weird. It wouldn't be the weirdest thing ever. But it would be weird to leave Millwall in the situation that he's had us, that he's taken us to. He's literally start bit by bit. The team's starting to become his team. He's just made a, a record signing for Millwall. Um, 1.7 million. Biggest signing in the history. And that's on him. But like I said. Um, in yesterday's video. The fixtures. Um, are very hard. In the first month. And in, in uh, October. We could be down the bottom of the league um, at the end of October and some strange things could happen then um, if we are struggling purely because of we've got all our tough games in the first couple of months but could Gary out be tempted if this job still uh, if they still have Rossini as the interim manager and they're still weighing up options for permanent um, sure Gary Out might be tempted to jump should the fans turn on him if we're like in the bottom three at, at the start of November 22 um, but yeah bit of a weird one um, I think Gary Out's dream job is available is he we don't know. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.